everyone. Mr. Smith here. And in this lesson, we're going to investigate stretches of functions. So I have my sheet queued up here in Kami. And uh, yeah, we're just going to do a lot of investigating and uh, hopefully come to some conclusions about some new types of transformations. I say new, but you guys looked at uh, stretches of quadratic functions in the grade 10 course. So to start, I actually have a, a new function for you guys to, to draw. And it's called the absolute value function. So those two vertical lines on either side refers to the absolute value of x. And what that, uh, that does is it simply takes the um, it ignores the sign of a number and just takes the uh, takes the value. So let's actually go into Desmos and I can show you what I mean by that. So we're going to graph y equals the absolute value function. So you do abs x, and so this is what it looks like. So you can see like for positive numbers, you just get you get the line y equals x. And then for negative numbers, so when x is negative 2, the absolute value function just looks at the, the, the part without the sign. So 2, negative 4, 4. So this is the absolute value function. It's just kind of like a v. So that's pretty cool. And I've asked you guys to graph uh, two modifications of that. So there we go. There's our absolute value function. So what happens when you multiply that by a half? What happens when you multiply that by three? So you can do 0 0.5. And you can get and do three. Uh, absolute value of x. And uh, for now, just get those graphs down. And then we'll see after doing a few more if we can recognize any patterns there. But yeah, the red one is our original, blue, the second guy, green, the third guy. So that's half X. You can use like dashed lines or whatever you want to for your own note, whatever you choose to do. But roughly speaking, that's what we got. Right. Let's see what happens when we apply the same transformations to the radical function. So we should all know a rough sketch of the radical function at this point. Looks like that. So let's clear these out. And let's try the radical function. So you can pause the video and just uh, speed through these on your own if you want, or just do them with me. Uh, the, the uh, the note appears to be fairly long today, but it's just a lot of graphs, so it takes up a lot of space. So there's our radical function, and we're graphing a half times that, or 0.5 times that, and 3 times that. There we go. All right, so purple one's the original, 0.5, or a half, the black guy here, and then... 3 root x is the red guy here. So black, pink was something like that, and green, something like that, more or less. So maybe you're forming some uh, rule in your mind about the effect of multiplying by a number out front. Um, let's look at one more. So uh, you might um, remember, I think it was our first day in the in, in the course when we looked at relations in the rule of four. You actually, I actually showed you what this function looks like, the sine function. It looks something like this. Um, all I really care about right now is the, we are not in this unit, so all I really care right now is the shape. I don't care whether you draw an accurate sketch or not. But this sine function at the very least, what I would like you to draw is that it starts at 0, 0, and goes up, comes back down like so, and then like so. That's the, the, the nuts and bolts of it. So maybe you can even make a prediction. What would the graph of this look like if you multiply it by a half? And what would this look like if you multiply it by 3? Let's find out. Uh, 
y equals 0 0.5 times sine x and y equals 3 sine x. All right. Blue is the original. Green multiplied by a half. Purple multiplied by 3. Okay, so it looked like this. Same x-intercepts. That's going to be important. And then this guy. All right. So, you know, you guys have had some time sketching these. Maybe think about how would you describe the effect of multiplying by A? Um, and secondly, were there any points that did not transform? Were any points that, for example, were on the first function, um, the original, and were still on the transformed ones? So, for, ex for example, looking at the one we're most familiar with, the radical function, was there a common point between all three of these guys? Same with the absolute value function, same with the, the sine function. Which points are shared? So we'll summarize this more later, but for now, hopefully what you saw is that what we get is a vertical stretch or a compression. And we'll uh, classify when it's each case in a little bit. And the points that didn't transform, if you said points on the x-axis, good for you. points where the y value is equal to zero. They are invariant, and that's a word I want you guys to know. Invariant means when a function undergoes a transformation, uh, a point is invariant if it doesn't move, if the transformed point is the same as the original. Let's look at a little tweak to this, and we're gonna look at a few more pairs or triples. I'm not sure if you guys can hear the bedtime drama or not, but bedtime drama is happening right now. Okay, so absolute value function. And let's graph what happens when we, this time notice we're, we're still multiplying by the same numbers, but this time it's a bit different. This time we're multiplying by, we're multiplying onto the X instead of outside the function. So we're gonna see if we can predict after looking at a few of these graphs, what that overall effect is. Uh, so let's clear these. Graph three, absolute value function. Half, oh, sorry, the absolute value of a half times x. And the absolute value of three times x. Let's get those down. Uh, so just be careful here. Black is the original. Red is the 0.5. Blue. So maybe just maybe what you noticed is that we got the same group of graphs for this one. So perhaps you're forming a rule in your head saying, well, the transformation is the same, whether we multiply inside or outside on the X or outside the function. Uh, and maybe that's the case. Well, I know what the case is because I teach this course, but let's see if we can refine this rule at all. And let's see if that happens with these guys. So graph, this time we're multiplying the X by a half and three inside the square root. Square root x, square root of 0, 0 0.5x, and the square root of, of 3x. Um, now, um, if you compare this with the three graphs from earlier, Generally, same, same shape. However, there is a there is a difference in the graphs 
the black graph, for example, root 3x is kind of higher than the original, but not as high as 3 root x. Um, and 0.5x is a bit lower, but it's different too. So what we're seeing here is that this is a different kind of transformation. So let's just get this down. We'll quantify this later, but hopefully you're convinced now that it does make a difference. And we want to say by the end of today, we want to say exactly what's happening. But for now, it's enough just to notice it's different. All right. Now it's this last one where I th really think you guys will notice. You guys will notice the rule. So there's the original. And then we'll do the sine of a half x. and the sine of 3x. So let's have a look at these guys. And again, I think this is where the rubber will, will really hit the road and a rule will click in your mind when you see this one. So watch what happens when you do the sine of a half x. Pretty cool. You get the same general shape and it actually doesn't go above or below negative one like the original, but it's been stretched out, right? The It takes longer to go back, go up and down. So that's pretty cool. And y equals the sine of 3x. Check this out. Look at that. It didn't go higher or lower. Instead, it got squashed together. And what's interesting is, you know, in the previous groups, when you multiply by 3, that stretch things out vertically. But in this, these groups, when you multiply the x by 3, it didn't stretch. It actually compressed the function. So that's pretty cool, in my opinion. I'm a little bit biased, though. So uh, how did the value of, oh, I suppose this should say k, how did the value of k um, change the graph of f at x. Oh, and we didn't put the, got to graph these guys. So uh, something like that for the green one. And just, you know, just do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just as long as you emphasize it's got compressed. Um, we don't need a ton of detail right now. So before we said there was a vertical stretch of compression, what happens here is that we have a horizontal stretch of compression. And which points stayed the same? So 0, 0 stayed the same in the absolute value function. 0, 0 stayed the same on root x. But the only point that stayed the same in the sine function was also 0, 0. So it's not points on the x-axis that remain invariant. Points on the y-axis are invariant in this case. All right, so we're going to do a little summary now, just more, more formal. So um, summarizing our first group of functions. So the graph of some function g, that's a constant times some base function f, and we are letting, we're making sure a is positive today, is a vertical stretch or compression. If we are multiplying by a value greater than 1, the function is stretched vertically by a factor of a. If the uh, value of a is between 0 and 1, it's so like a decimal or a fraction between 0 and 1, then the function is compressed vertically 
a factor of a. So for our examples where a was a half, the function got compressed by a half. And when it was a was three, the function got stretched by a factor of three. So let's get a little visual of that. Um, so I'm going to graph some function. Um, uh, let's do this. So I'm going to graph some function f of, f of x. And I'm just going to keep it simple. Um, I want to make sure we have a variety of points here. So let's do, let's just do this point, this point, that point, that point, and um, let's finish it off going here. So this, this, the function I drew doesn't have an equation. It's just a random function. I'm going to use to illustrate my purposes here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so call this guy. This is a function. Whoops, get my pencil tool. This is some just some function f at x. Um, I'm going to draw a function g at x. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to draw it's equal to two times f at x. So we now know that the effect of multiplying by a two is a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So all these y values just get multiplied by two. So where this guy goes to, has a y value of five, g, the function g would have a y value of 10. When f of x had a value of zero, well, two times zero is zero. This point is invariant, it doesn't move. Double the y value from two to four, double the y value from negative one to negative two. So everything is stretched away from the x-axis and then that final point is invariant. And so we get a sketch that looks like this. Oh, I want, uh, let's just use that red. It's kind of similar, I guess. And down that way and down that way. So that is g at x. And then I'll uh, use green here. And let's draw some function, let's call it h at x. And let's call it a half times f of x. So we know that we just take half the values. So if y value of 5 goes down to 2.5. 0, 0, invariant. 2 goes down to 1. Negative 1 to negative a half. And then 0, 0, invariant. So I think that's a, just a good generic. Going to do green here. That was a good example, I think. Just some generic function. So stretching vertically, compressing vertically, in my opinion, not so bad. Because frankly, you guys did that with parabolas in your grade 10 course. And what you didn't do in your grade 10 course was horizontal stretches compression. So that's the new thing. Sorry, guys. I'm shooting for home, from home. Worked all day, came home, did dinner, played with the kids till like 6.30, and now I'm shooting videos for you guys. So if I want to have a sip of coffee, I'm going to do that. What did we see about transformations where you multiply the x by a number? So we saw already this is a horizontal stretch or compression. And here's the counterintuitive part, okay? So before, if A was bigger than one, we had a vertical stretch by a factor of A. What we saw in this case, even think back to the sine function, look at the one with three X, when K was bigger than one, it actually, the function got squashed or compressed horizontally, so it's flipped, right? So this, this is something to be mindful of. Um, if K is greater than one, we say, that the function is compressed by a factor of, now I want to be careful here um, because usually, so usually we don't say compress, if, 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 if uh, k was equal to two, we don't say compressed by a factor of two because a factor of two kind of implies you're multiplying. So we say that it's compressed by a factor of 
1 over k. And can I write that as an equation perhaps? I don't think I can. But yeah, I'll uh, maybe write it in pen actually. It might work. Compressed by a factor of 1 over k. So if we look at the sine function example, the k value is 3, and the function was compressed by a factor of a third. Okay, so it's compressed by that reciprocal value. And if 0 is less than k is less than 1, so if k is a decimal, the function is stretched horizontally. Now I actually want to add in... Um, I'm gonna move. I'm just gonna move things around here because I want that to say. I'll just type it in. Uh, we should have said compress horizontally to be very clear by a factor of, and as we mentioned, that is one over k. And if k is between zero and one, the function is stretched. By a factor of. Also 1 over k. Why 1 over k? Well, just off to the side here. So let's, let's look at our examples where k was equal to 1 half. What happened was that the functions got stretched by a factor of 2. So you can see for the sine function, you know, where this guy had, um, oh, I think I drew it upside down actually. The real one should look like that. Can I erase that one? That would be cool. Oh, I can. So good. Yeah. So that's kind of an important fix. Sorry about that, guys. But you can see where um, this guy had an x-intercept, the, the black one, after this first hump. That x-intercept kind of got moved twice as far out when k was a half. So a factor of a half, it gets stretched by a factor of two. It's a reciprocal. So going back down here, just maybe in the margins, you can write this if you want to. If k is a half, 1 over k equals 1 over 1 half, which is equal to 2. So this statement makes sense. If k is a half, the function will be st uh, stretched horizontally by a factor of 2. He's just on fire today, horizontally. That takes some getting some takes getting used to because it's counterintuitive to what you learned about vertical stretches, but it's the opposite when you're multiplying by the x. If k is bigger than one, it's compressed. If it's between zero and one, it's stretched. And that's really the need to know. Now I'm going to maybe make this one a little simpler, just so I don't run out of space. So I'm gonna make this guy go through here. I want it to be black. Say so here and here and uh, let's go here and here. Why not? So we'll call that this guy f and x. that to green. Okay, so this equation doesn't have any function or doesn't have any equation or anything, but it's a function. So uh, let's do what we did above and let's graph a couple things. So in pink here, let's call a function g. Let's call function g two, or sorry, excuse me. f at 2x. So wherever there's an x, you multiply that x by 2. Um, so we know that this would be a compression by a factor of 1 over 2. So all the points, we move them half as close to the y-axis, like this. This guy goes to uh, 1 and a half, and this guy, which was at 5, would go to 2 and a half. And the graph would look like this. So everything's squashed 
towards the y-axis, compressed horizontally. That worked out pretty good. And that was our function g of x. And then let's do h at x equals f at 1 half x. So we know now that that's actually a stretch of 1 over 1 half equals 2. It's a stretch. So this x value is 2, goes to 4. 0, 0, invariant. This point at 3 will go to 6. And this point at 5 goes to 10. And that just fits on there. Nice. Again, guys, big idea. If you can wrap your mind around this, you've got it for today. Is that when k is above 1, it's counterintuitive. It's actually a compression horizontally. And when k is a ha uh, between 0 and 1, it's a stretch. And uh, I'll say this multiple times, but... You know, as you guys are doing uh, practice problems, having Desmos open to check can, it's just a great, just an absolutely great idea. So, you know, have in mind what the, your transform graph would look like, and then just check in Desmos, right, whenever you can. So we're going to get some examples in here, guys. So um, in, in these examples, you're going to have to think about what transformation is happening here, and you're going to transform these points. So... Um, we have uh, my pencil tool. That's the thing going with all these different colors. They always have to switch back and forth. Pencil tool, black. So we have uh, four key points I've kind of labeled on there. Minus three, one. Uh, minus two, minus two. I think we actually shifted this one in our previous note. Uh, one, minus one. And three, minus one. So... With each of these, what would be fantastic is if you pause the video and predicted where these image points would be and then sketched it on your own and then just played catch up or like and then unpaused it to check with me. So I'll assume you've tried. This is a stretch by a factor of two. The image points, if the original points were x, y, the image points will be x two times y, mul just multiplying the y values by two. Minus two, four. 1 minus 2, and 3 minus 2. Uh, minus 2. Oh, yeah, it's minus 2, minus 2. So minus 2, minus 4. Looks better down there. And then 1 minus 2, 3 minus 2. So I'm just going to do a rough sketch here. Something like that. So its position isn't moved horizontally. All the y values have been stretched out. We can see that function is all stretched out. How about this guy? So same original points. So we had minus 3, 1, minus 2, minus 2, 1, minus 1, 3, minus 1. Okay, so what effect does this, does this 1 half x have? So you want to pause the video, think about this. What would the image point look like? You can unpause when you're ready. So here we go, guys. So this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So the x values get multiplied by 2. Why 2? Because 1 over a half is equal to 2. So horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So minus 3, 1 goes to minus 6, 1. And then minus 4, minus 2, 2, minus 1, and 6, minus 1. So if we plot those image points, we should just get the same graph just stretched out. Uh, 2, minus 1, and 6, minus 1. Is it looking that way? Yes. Looks pretty good. All right. Let's keep going and get a few more examples in the books. So uh, in this case, so I've told you our base function is the radical function, and we are going to graph the uh, three times that base function. And so what we're doing here is just getting a bit of practice creating the equation. This one's not so bad because f at x is just root x. So we're graphing the function three times root x. So in practice, if I said, guys, graph three root x, I would expect you guys to one, Note the base function is a radical function. 
be able, I need you guys to get um, as many base points as you can, 00114293 are our classic ones, and be able to make a sketch. I have done all this for you here, just because we've done a lot, and I just wanna make sure you get lots of practice. But this is all stuff you should be able to do ahead of time. Um, let's graph the image points. Again, pause the video and unpause if you wanna try it on your by yourself. So this is just a vertical stretch by a factor of three. The image points are three times the y values. So zero, zero, one, three, four, six, and nine, nine. Plot those image points. And what we should see is it should look like a st vertical stretch of the original guy. Nine, nine, is that right? Yeah. Looks pretty good. All right, if you guys wanna try this next one, you can pause and unpause when you're ready. So I've got certain key points here on our rational function. So minus one, ooh, uh, that should definitely be minus one, minus one, yep. Yeah. Uh, so right there, minus 0 0.5, minus two, 0.52, and one, one. Um, so what does this equation look like first? So we are replacing x with 1 half x. And 1 divided by a half is equal to 2. So the equation that we're graphing is 2 over x. So um, there's two ways to think about this one ultimately. One you can see from the original. This is a horizontal from the k is a half. This is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. But what we've shown here, it's pretty cool, that this is actually equivalent to a vertical stretch of a fact by a factor of two. So, uh, but let's keep it to the original. So the original function says that we're gonna have a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. So minus two, minus one, minus one, minus two, one, two, and two, one. Um, with uh, stretches, our asymptotes stretch two. However, because our asymptotes for this function were just at zero, zero, or sorry, x, y equals zero and x equals zero, they just stay where they were. So we have minus two, minus one, minus one, minus two, one, two, and two, one. And so looks a bit like this. So you can kind of tell there's just some bigger gaps between the axes, right? So it's been stretched horizontally, but that bigger gap you could also explain as a vertical stretch, which is a really cool idea that sometimes a vertical stretch can be thought of as a horizontal stretch too, for some functions, not all functions, but that was pretty cool. All right, do you guys wanna try this last one? So I've given you some key points on the absolute value function just to help you graph it. I just chose some points at random and three, three. So I'll let you guys do this. What's the transformation? We're graphing a half root X here. So you can pause and unpause when you're ready. Of course, this is a vertical compression by a factor of a half and we'll multiply, oh, excuse me. We're multiplying, if it's a vertical compression, we're multiplying our Y values, right? So zero and the Y values get halved. So minus four, four goes to minus four, two. Minus two, two goes to minus two, one. Zero, zero, invariant. And three, three would go to three, 1.5. We plot those points. It should look like this guy has just been squashed down. Minus two, one, zero, zero. 3, 1.5, and yeah, sure enough, same kind of shape, just kind of squashed down. All right, tons of examples in the books today, guys, doing really good, lots of graphing. So just one more example uh, for three of these guys. Um, I want you to uh, identify the base function, sketch the base function, describe the transformation and then sketch the new one. So I'll, I'll maybe walk through the first one with you guys. So the function 3x, the base function there 
is just a linear function f at x equals x. And everybody should know what that graph looks like at this point. It's just the line y equals x, slope of 1, y-intercept of 0. And I might as well use the straight line tool. Something like so. What effect does multiplying out front by a 3 have? Well, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So how do you sketch that? Well, you just take all any of the points and just stretch those y values by a factor of 3. Fit the ones you can on there. So I like minus, a y value of minus 3 goes to minus 9. Can't fit it on. Minus 2 would go to minus 6. Can't fit it on. Minus 1 would go to minus 3. 0, 0 invariant. A y value of 1 gets stretched to 3. So we already know what the graph of this looked like. It has a slope of 3 with a y-intercept of 0. But now we're graphing it in terms of transformations. That's all the points I can get on there, actually. So everything fits together. Your y equals mx plus b, your new knowledge of transformations, and it all fits. They all complement each other. So that's g at x equals 3x. Well, this guy was just f at x equals x. Um, some of you guys may have noticed that we could also have thought of, of this guy as a horizontal compression. Horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3. You can think of it both ways because the 3 is out front, but it's also being multiplied on the x. And guys, check this out. See how we have an x value of 6? Where did that x value go to? A third of that, 2. So everything kind of fit together. It was like you could think of it as a vertical com a vertical compression or, uh, sorry, horizontal compression or a vertical stretch. You get the exact same graph. That's pretty cool. All right, if you want to finish the last two guys, uh, you can on your own. Uh, and unpause when you're ready. Um, but if you just want to grind it out and follow through with me, that's okay too. All right. So you guys should recognize the base function here is your basic parabola. Let's sketch it. 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and negative 2, 4. Uh, 3, 9 is off, so that's the points we can fit on there. Let's transform, transform those points. How? What's the transformation here? I don't know why I'm writing when I could type. Because the 1 half is out front of the function, this is a vertical compression by a factor of 1 half. So take all of those y values and have them. A y value of 4 goes to 2. Of 1 goes to a half. 0, 0 is invariant. 1 goes to a half. And 2, 4, shrink the y value down. So the x values stay unchanged, but we're just collapsing it down, compressing it down. g at x equals a half x squared. One more, guys. Doing great. So... Uh, the root of 2x, so what you guys should be able to recognize now is that that is the base function is a radical function. You also should know those key points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, should be automatic at this point. Now that we have the base function, what transformation is going on here? In this case, function is compressed horizontally. By how much? By a factor of, not 2, by a factor of 1 over 2. So all those points, take their x value and have it. Move it closer to the x, the y-axis. 0, 0, invariant. x value of 1, have it. x value of 4, have it to 2. x value of 9, halves to 4.5. And you can see, you get this function that's closer to the y-axis, it has been compressed.
All right. So uh, those of you guys in my class, I have suggested some practice. I may add or subtract to this depending on um, how I'm feeling um, because you guys will be doing that independently. Uh, but yeah, we got through what I think is kind of the hardest of the transformations, these horizontal stretches, compressions. In our next lesson, we'll look at reflections, which are a little bit easier. And then we'll begin to combine everything together to sketch some really cool complex functions. I think it'll be fun. But until then, guys, I hope you're staying well. Have a great day, and we'll see you soon.